It's spine time, guys. Let's go. Hello again, everybody. We are going to be moving on to the next part of the A-show skeletal system, and that would be your vertebrae. Before we head over to identify the parts of the vertebrae, let's not get too excited now. We first have to find out a few of the basics about vertebrae in general. For one, what is the vertebrae and what is it for? It's the thing that connects the brain to the rest of the body. You can have this beautiful skull with all the beautiful sense organs and all of that, but if it's not connected to the rest of the body by way of your vertebral column, it's a pretty useless piece of merchandise that we've got here. The vertebrae typically have five main regions. The most cranial segments would be the cervical vertebrae, followed by the thoracic, and then the lumbar, then sacral, then caudal. Take note that not all vertebrates will have all five vertebral regions, and that's fine. Don't panic. A commonality among vertebrae that you will find across many different species, many different representatives that we have, is that they have this really solid cylinder right there, which gives overall rigidity to the spinal column. And that part is called the centrum. And this is what really gives that oomph to your spinal column. Without something this sturdy, just slight movements and slight pressures could really do some damage to your spine. And we don't want that. That sucks. Centra can be found across different vertebrate vertebrae, except that they don't always appear the same. So there are different types of centra depending on the shape of their ends. First, let's have a look at the vertebral segment of your dogfish. Both ends of the centrum are concave, and in this species, that would mean that it has an aphyseless centrum. How about for this guy right here? This is one vertebral segment right here. The cranial end of the centrum is concave, while the posterior is convex. This type of centrum is called the proceless centrum. And the exact opposite of that, in which the cranial end of your centrum is convex and the posterior or the caudal region is concave, that would be epistocelous. Let's have a look at your bird vertebrae. It's not round, it's actually saddle-shaped on both ends. Posterior end as well, saddle-shaped. This type of centrum is called heterocelous, and this is why bird necks are really, really flexible. Notice how birds can reach over their backs and they can reach all the way to their uropygeal gland. That's thanks to the kind of vertebrae that they have, particularly the kind of articulation or the kind of centrum that they have. It offers a greater range of motion as well as flexibility. Let's have a look at your cat vertebrae. No concavities, just flat, flat here and flat here. That would mean that the centrum is amphiplatean. Amphi meaning both, uh, plat like a plate, it's flat. Ang plat nga nyan, di ba? Kasi ampi plat nyan ni. Other types of centrum shapes would include biconvex, in which both ends are convex. Plat is sealess, in which it's flat in the front, concave posteriorly. And then the opposite of that would be coeloplatean, in which anteriorly it is concave, and then posteriorly it is flat. Another thing that we should discuss about vertebrae would be their points of articulation, which are called apophysis. So there are many different kinds of apophyses, and let's have a rundown real quick. Zygapophyses are the articulations between vertebrae. This point of articulation, the surface therefore of that vertebrae would be a zygopophysis. If it is located posteriorly, then that is the post-zygopophysis. And if it's located anteriorly, then that is the pre-zygopophysis. The pre-zygopophysis of one vertebrae will articulate with the post-zygopophysis of the other vertebrae or of the vertebrae in front of it. Next we have base apophyses or heme apophyses or basal stumps. These are ventrolateral projections of your centrum and in some animals they kind of are the points of articulation of the hemal arch. Next we have the diapophyses and the parapophyses. These are lateral projections of your centrum which articulate with the ribs. The diapophysis is the one that articulates with the tuberculum of the rib, so that would be this one right here. The parapophysis is the one that articulates with the capitulum of the rib, 
So this is the capitulum, and that point of articulation is the parapophysis. Another type of apophysis is what we call a pluripophysis, which is the rib attachments plus the fused rib. So let me explain real quick. Think of it as this whole thing is fused. Instead of having a diapophysis and a parapophysis and then the ribs, if it's fused together, then it's a pluripophysis. And an example of that would be the cervical vertebrae of your cat. You will notice that the vertebral arterial canal is now formed by just one fused structure. So this is a pluripophysis. And another type of apophysis that we don't have an example for is what we call the hypopophysis. And that is a mid-ventral projection from the centrum. Now that you've gotten to know the different types of centra and apophyses, go ahead and explore the different vertebrae of our representative species. You guys enjoy. I'll see you soon. Peace out.